We got to get our camera. Get your camera face on. Gosh, they're looking at you. They're not looking at me. Oh, hey, how you guys doing? Hey, kids. Uh, it's me and Greenback here. We just came from Australia. Just come way out here to go to Pico Beer just to say hi to you guys and to do this clip. Now, check this out. Mm. We got a fun activity sheet up on the Hope Community website. Yes, it's going to be really fun. Parents, it's me, Professor Faith. You know me. We're going to have your kids go up on the website and fill out the activity sheet, and we're going to need you guys to fill it back out and email it to Pastor Vegas. Okay, we're going to need to email back to Pastor Vegas or come here to the church, and we'll be able to get your kids a shout-out on the next clip or, you know, get some extra Bible bones. They need them extra Bible bones to go to King's house. All right, say goodbye, Greenback. Yeah, yep, hey, all right, see you guys later. Hey, I'm so glad you can join us today for Hope at Home for Kids. We're so excited today to share the Word of God with you, but I just want to say that we here at Hope, we miss you so much, we love you so much. Don't forget about us. I'm Teacher Joel. I hope you haven't forgotten about me. Do you, do you guys still remember me? Do you? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I, I, I really can't hear you. But I hope you guys miss me too and you miss us too. We're so excited for the time that we can come back together and worship and, have, and play games, go to King's House and do all that fun stuff. But in the meantime, let's get right to it. Hello, it's time for our weekly saying. Our weekly saying this week is, I will not give up. But we're going to put some hand motions to it and make it fun because church is fun. Yes? Yes. Excellent. So everybody get your fingers out. Go, I. And then say, if get your finger and will not, go like this. Shake your heads. Excellent. And then say, when you give up, put your hand to your head and go, oh, no. Like that. Like you've given up. Ready? We're going to put it all together. Say, get your fingers. Go, I will not. Shake your heads. And then go, give up. Awesome. You guys are doing great. We're going to put it all together. Be extra dramatic and extra silly and extra fun. Ready? I will not give up. Oh, no. Like that. Good job. You guys are doing excellent. I love it. Thank you, Inspector Clue. I like that guy. I like him a lot. So today we're looking at someone named Nehemiah. Ne Nehemiah. 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 He started and he finished well, which is our goal too. Amen? Amen. And just like Noah and just like Joseph, Nehemiah was faithful to God. And we see that in his life. So during this time, I'm setting up the scene. Nehemiah, he's living in a land called Persia. At this point, the Israelites, who are the people of God, they had been taken over by the Persians. Everyone say, boo. I still can't hear you, but I think you said boo. And I hope you didn't get scared. Anyway, so Nehemiah, he's actually super blessed, just like Joseph, who was able to be second in command. Nehemiah was actually a cupbearer for the king of Persia, which is a pretty, pretty cool job. And Nehemiah heard that Jerusalem, which was the city of God, which is where the Israelites lived, he heard that their walls were broken down. They were, they were rubble. Can you say rubble five times really fast? Rubble, 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 rubble. I guess that was easy. Maybe say it ten times. Really, really, really fast. Rubber, 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 rubber. I'm saying rubber. Anyway, so Nehemiah, he heard that the walls of Jerusalem were broken down and they were rubble, 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 rubble. Barney Rubble. Who's Barney Rubble? He's a Flintstone, isn't he? I don't think you guys know who the Flintstones are. Anyway, so Nehemiah, he heard that the walls were rubble and it made him really sad, actually, because Jerusalem was a city of God and there were a lot of other cities, a lot of other nations, a lot of other kings who weren't the nicest people or the nicest nations. And so because the nation of Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, didn't have any walls, it left them unprotected. It left them vulnerable. Kind of like, you know, you ever have like, oh my gosh, I don't know if you guys do this, but you guys need to do this. Buy some waffles, like some Egos, and, you know, put them in the toaster, make sure they're nice and warm. When you take them out, you need to, you make a sandwich. With what? I will tell you, with peanut butter and jelly. And if you want to go crazy, add a banana in there. A peanut butter and jelly waffle sandwich. Oh! I'm making that later. 
I'm totally making that later. Anyways, but you make the sandwich, you're so excited, right? And then you, you go in your living room and you put it on your table or on like your coffee table or on the couch, wherever, and you're going to watch your favorite episode of Hope at Home. And then you remember, oh, I forgot my milk in the kitchen. And you go to the kitchen and you come back and guess who's eating your sandwich? Your dog. Ah! Not fun, right? You left your sandwich unprotected. <laughs> That is not a fun day. Anyway, so Nehemiah, he hears that Jerusalem has no walls, and he gets sad. And you know who found out that Nehemiah was sad? The king of Persia. The king of Persia, he sees Nehemiah, because Nehemiah, is, he's, I don't know if he's crying or he's sad, but Nehemiah, he's praying, he's praying to God, and he's still serving God. And one day, the king asks Nehemiah, Nehemiah, why are you sad? And so Nehemiah, an honest man, tells the king, I'm sad because Jerusalem, my home, my nation, the city of God that I serve, they have no walls. They are vulnerable. And the king of Persia says, you know what? I'm okay for a while. I know you're my cupbearer, but I think for a while I'll have have the other guy get my cups. I'm going to release you to go and rebuild the walls of the city that you love. Here's the important thing. I don't know if you guys know this, but Jerusalem is the city of God. It's the city where God's people live. And in that city was a temple where the presence of God was. And God, I know you guys know this, but God loves being among his people. And so during this time, Jerusalem and the people of Jerusalem, they're scattered all over. That's why Nehemiah was in Persia, because they were scattered. They had been taken over, and there was no unity. So Nehemiah wants to rebuild these walls. And the king says, you know what, Nehemiah? Not only, everyone say, favor! Woohoo! The king says, not only, Nehemiah, can you rebuild the walls and take care of the rubble, but I'm going to give you the materials that you need. Wow. Talk about favor. Not only can Nehemiah go work and serve the Lord and do what, what, what God has placed in his heart. Because here's the thing. When we... Love Jesus, and when we follow Jesus, we're going to have the best desires. And we're going to have the desires to do what God wants us to do. It's so amazing. It's so amazing loving Jesus, serving Jesus, and coming to church, which we'll be doing soon. And then, you know, yeah, it's great. Anyway, so the king, he releases Nehemiah. And not only releases Nehemiah to build the walls, but he funds it. The king says, whatever materials you need, do it. And so Nehemiah, he travels to Jerusalem. And you know how earlier I was saying that there was nations and people who were not nice? Well, there's people they did not like and they did not want Jerusalem for its walls to be rebuilt. And so they started, so when they heard about Nehemiah going to build the wall, right away they started, you know, saying mean things. They started discouraging him. They started making fun of him. Oh, man. It was probably really sad, right? I don't know what they were saying, but they were saying some really, 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 really not nice things. Just trying to make him sad and discouraged. Trying to get him to not do what God wants him to do. It's kind of like, you know, I don't know if like maybe you were at school or maybe you were with your friends and you were thinking, man, I, you know, and maybe you made yourself a peanut butter and waffle, peanut butter and waffle, a peanut butter and jelly waffle sandwich with banana because it's healthy. <laughs> Not so much, but bananas are good for you, good for your eyes. Anyway, maybe like you're at school and maybe you prayed for your food and someone made fun of you. Should that should someone making fun of you stop you from praying? No, because you're not praying because of them. You're praying because you love Jesus, you love God, and you're thankful, right? Because you're hard. You're like, man, my mom made me this really good sandwich, and now I'm thankful. Lord, thank you for my mom. Lord, thank you for this food. I thank you that it's blessed, sanctified. It holds my body, and it's going to fill my belly. Woohoo! Anyway, so they're discouraging Nehemiah. And, and by the way, it's not like, it's not like Nehemiah's going like, to like walk up to the wall and be like, patch, 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 cool, we're done. No, like Nehemiah, like he has some work to do. Like he has to like rebuild this wall like piece by piece. Here, like, have you ever worked on like a thousand piece puzzle? It takes a while, right? You got to like get all the edges and then, especially one where like it's just like, like, we were working on a puzzle uh, earlier this week, and, like, half the puzzle is just blue sky. That's hard <laughs> to just puzzle, like, the same color over and over again. Could you imagine working on a puzzle that was, like, a million pieces? 
and like pieces that it's just not like little little pieces. No, like there's like boulders. <laughs> I like that boulder. They're boulders, and you got to put them together, and you got to figure out okay, like because this I'm rebuilding this wall, so I got to build it the same way. And but here's the amazing thing: Nehemiah was able to rebuild this wall in like 52 days. That's less than two months. And here's why: because even though people were making fun of Nehemiah. Even though they were sending letters to, Ma- to Nehemiah, like, and they were spreading rumors, they were gossiping, they were being very, very not nice. But here's the thing: was Nehemiah building the wall for them? No. Was Nehemiah building the wall for the king? No. Nehemiah was building the wall because he loved God, and it's desire that God placed in Nehemiah, and all Nehemiah was doing was being obedient. And that was enough to keep him going. He was like, you know, I'm not doing it for them. I don't care what they're saying. I don't care about the letters. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to build this wall because that's the most important thing. Nehemiah was running his race, and as he was running, even though people were saying things or people were doing things, no, he kept running forward, and he was able to finish this wall. So I don't know. If you know people said things to you at school, or maybe you had friends that were making fun of you because you go to church, or they're making fun of you because you're reading your Bible every day, you know what? Don't worry about it because you're not doing it for them, right? You're doing it for Jesus, who loves you, who died for you, who forgave us of our sins. And what better way to love Jesus than just to do what He asks us to do? Can I get an amen? I still can't hear you, but I know you said amen. Let's look at Nehemiah's life, and look at his focus, his race. He was so in love with God, so focused on serving God that it did not matter what anyone else said. Isn't that awesome? It's like it's like your parents, because like because like my mom did this with me. She was happy and she was grateful and she was really proud of me. When I got really good grades, when I got A's and B's, well, I don't know if she was happy with B's, but she was super happy with A's, and and she would reward me. She was like, "Hey, back then, I don't know, probably like in third grade, I was so obsessed with a TV show called Power Rangers. I think they still have that, but it was the original Power Rangers, and my favorite Power Ranger was a white Power Ranger. And I remember her telling me, she's like, "If you get good grades, and then you get you get, no, she said, if you get an A on your test this Friday, I'm gonna go get you that white Power Ranger." Now people can make fun of me because I was studying so hard. People can make fun of me because I had friends who were like, and they probably weren't really friends anyway. But they they weren't getting good grades. They 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 didn't do their homework, and so they made fun of me for doing my homework. They made fun of me for being smart. They made fun of me for you know getting good grades on my test. But I wasn't getting good grades for them. I was getting good grades for my mom because I wanted that white Power Ranger. The same thing with God. God loves us so much, and God loves loving us. I'm doing it for Him because He is my rewarder. He is the one who makes me happy. He is the one who satisfies me. And it's just like you know, I don't know if you guys remember about Abraham, but God comes to Abraham. He says, "I am your exceedingly great reward." And so Abraham was able to obey God because God was his reward. It was the same thing with Noah, same thing with Joseph, and it's the same thing with Nehemiah. God, the God of the universe, the God who created Nehemiah. That was enough for Nehemiah to not care what people said and to run that race. Bonjour. Let's go over the four points of today's lesson. Four. Ready? 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 One, two, three, four. Okay. Point number one: Don't give up with what God has asked you to do, even. When it's difficult, yep, don't give up. Two, remember, with God, all things are possible. Three, number three, as disciples of God, we need to work together to do what God has asked us to do. Amen. Team work makes the dream work. Ah. All right, and number four. We got to remember we need to fulfill what God has called us to do, what God has asked us to do, and as we do it, we need to remember that God is with us every single step of the way. He doesn't leave us, and He helps us do what He's asked us to do. Amen. All right, guys, those are our four main points. Remember them. Remember, and make sure you fill out your activity sheet. I think I just gave you some answers. Fill it out. All right, guys, love you. Bye. Or as we say in France, au revoir. Au revoir. Oi, how you doing?
you doing? It's me, Professor Faith. All right, here we go. The Word of God. All right, Proverbs four twenty three. Guard your heart above all else. Yes, above all else. Nothing else. Above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Yes, yes, it does. Yes, thank you, Jesus. All right, you ready? Proverbs four twenty three. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Yes, good, good. All right. Okay, one more time. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Yes, yes. All right, I got to catch my flight back to Australia. See you later. (laughs) 